What is up, Goat World? It is me, your boy, JDZ, and I'm back at you with another Go Format video. That's right, the Mustachio Menace has returned to you yet again with some more spice. The spice of life is in. But first, we got a little bit of Goat news. If you are participating in the competitive scene and the Goat Format scene, it's happening right now. July is gonna be chock full of different Goat Format events that are gonna be taking place. So on July 9th, we got Patreon 18. And then on the 17th, we got Patreon 19. And then on the 23rd, okay, there's gonna be GFC 18 that's happening. So that one's gonna be the huge ones. The Patreons are, you have to pay the, the $10 Patreon fee to get in, there's one invite, but these GFCs are free to enter. They're gonna be huge events. So definitely take the time and set the schedule for that one. On August 27th, you got the GOAT Grand Prix in Philadelphia. That one just got extended, so they were able to make a, make a larger venue to get more people in there. So the, it was capped out. But now you can go ahead and get in there. I think it's gonna be up to 64th. But you got July 23rd, you got July the 17th, and then you got July the 9th. So it's a lot of goats happening for you if you're if you're into that thing. So also in July, we have the GOAT format War League. That's still gonna be taking place as well. We're still trying to just schedule out. We're still in round one, but it's happening slowly uh, and surely. Hi. The electric matches are happening all the time. It's lots of fun. So if you want, make sure you tune into that as well. So I encourage all of you, if you're watching this video, to go and participate in any of these events that you have time for, because they're gonna be lots of fun. But in the meantime, in between time, if you don't have a deck that you wanna play, maybe you can take one of these decks. What I'm doing today, I'm just going to take a little bit of time to just go over the top eight decks from Patreon World Qualifier 17. Like I said, number 18 is happening on the on Saturday, this Saturday. Yeah, so if you wanna play, make sure you go and enter that and maybe you could take one of these decks, tweak it yourself, put your own little spin on it, add your own little spice to it, and you could be featured in this video as well. I worked really hard and I asked several times. I tried I tried to get the homie Ivan to come through and he has refused my offers in several times. But if you wanna see all these decks, they're going to be in uh, on the goformat.com website um, where you can just see them and, and use them. And now also, all my, all my fellow net deckers, I'll do you all the service and I'll put all the links to all these decks in the description of this video with the name of it and what place it came in. So you could just take that, download it to your dueling book and and have at it right away. Save you a little bit of time. So I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I'll, I'll, I'll homie hook you up with that one. All right, so with that, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the top eight. Um, and then we, I'm gonna go over, give you my, my feedback on it, what I think about it. Like I said, I just, I enjoy the game a lot. I just wanna, you know, tell you what I think about it. And if you agree with me or disagree with me, make sure you jump to the comments and let me know. We can have a, a, a back and forth about it, you know? So we'll do it like that. And shout out to you, Ivan, for winning. Ivan uh, Rosito did win this event. Um, spoiler alert, I don't know, he, uh, he he took it down. I can't get him to come onto the program and talk to me about it, but you know what I'm saying? He's still a homie and we're gonna, we're gonna do it like that. So, all right, so we're gonna jump right on into it and tell me what you think, number eight. All right, so number eight, we got the Crash Vault. Real homie of mine. Uh, he's on the same Yu-Gi-Oh! dueling team as me. He's taught me a lot about this game. Crash Volt is a long time, fantastic Yu-Gi-Oh! player. Shonen Jump champion, actually. Um, and he's back. Uh, he topped this event playing uh, Chaos Turbo, looks like. And uh, the, these ratios, I think, are, are I want to say standard, but still there are some unique things in here. Uh, so he took the he took the Night Assailant variety, uh, kind of Ryan Spicer. I don't know if you saw that interview, but Ryan Spicer also doesn't like Grey Fruit Spy. There are no spies present in this deck. Double the Book of Moons. Uh, the double Jargri, double Gekki Bake 3 Solemn. That's unique. Uh, you don't see that too often. And also, he also decided to go with the one Nobleman to cross out, one uh, mind control variety in the main deck. Uh, and I spoke to him about this because me personally, me personally, you know what I'm saying? I don't agree with this. I think Nobleman to cross out is just way too strong to not use at its maximum right now. But his theory was in these Patreon events, they can get very Helminty very quick. They can get very warrior centric, very aggressive, very quickly. And Nobleman is gonna be dead a lot of the times. Whereas Mind Control uh, in the turbo matchup, you can still get um, much use out of it. But also in that warrior matchup, you still can get some value out of it by taking a Chaos Monster, taking a Kaiko, putting it on your side, bringing out the Sork. Um, so you can get more longevity out of a out of the mind control as opposed to the, the Nobleman. So that was the thought process on that. And I, I guess it did, it did pretty well because uh, it got to the top of this event. These, these events are very tough to play in. Uh, yeah, the Night Assailant build is, is very catchy right now. It's very popular with the card destruction and Thunder Dragon. Super bomb play that you can just change the game in, a, in an instant with that. Uh, you also like to go with 
switching over to the side, he kind of he kind of he kind of got away from the the Mobius stuff and the and the kind of standard stuff that you kind of see in the sides these days. But he went with the Ashura Priest. He's got the mystical space inside, which is pretty standard these days. Uh, he's got the magic cylinder. I want to point that out. So that card is really good. It's starting to catch on a lot. I'm seeing that a little bit more, especially in this solemn judgment meta. You got this uh, magic cylinder. People start flipping judgments. You hit them with a magic cylinder at the right time. That could just seal uh, seal games pretty easy. Uh, three Sakus for Warriors. And he liked to go with the three uh, Trap Dust Shoots in the side. Very versatile card. Um, if you lose one, you put your so you put your Trap Dust Shoots in going first in that game too. It'll just open one up and it can just turn the game around for you, especially in the mirror and also maybe against control, maybe not so much against Warriors. So uh, tell me what you think about this. Crash Volts number eight. Got the Berserk Gorillas in there. Very dope. Very, very clean, uh, very clean turbo deck. I mean, I probably would, I still would run the two knocks opposed to the one and one, but that's just me. I don't know. Tell me what you think. All right. So that's number, that's number eight. I don't know how the brackets work. Technically it was tied for seventh, but you know, shout out to you again, Crash Vote, Ultra Instincts all day, every day. All right. So then number set, number seven. All right. Number seven, we got Birdman. Okay, so Birdman, he's a newer player. He just came onto the scene like a dynamo. He just came off the ladder. I uh, found out about Goat World probably the same way. Hopefully, you could be the next Birdman. But he comes in, he plays Panda Burn exclusively. I don't ever think I've ever seen this user play any deck besides uh, a burn based strategy, which is fine, which is cool. He's very pro proficient at playing this deck. Um, I wanted to get Pui on here, but uh, she's been very busy. That is the Burn Queen. Shout out to you, Pui. Shout out to Card Academy. Make sure you go check out what she's doing over there. But she can give you a better deep dive analysis in Burn. Me personally, I am not a Burn savant. I don't really get down in the ways of Burn too much. I don't really play the deck too often, but I do know the deck is very competent and is very powerful, and it can uh, it can it can definitely you know snatch some games and and and, and make make deep runs very consistently. Um, so he's got the three. He's got three giant rats, three pandas. I'm pretty sure that's that's standard. He's got the two jars, Lily, uh, the two kinetic soldiers. I'm not sure if that's standard. And the Dez Koala, I know that comes and goes. Uh, the two giant grenades, um, you know, again, that can, I've seen that as up to, I've seen that go as high as three. I think, I think it's pretty solid. It looks, it looks pretty solid as well. Got the swords in there, got all the burn, or burn stuff you would see, but going to the side, he's got the, Birdman's got the chain energy in the side. He's got the mass driver, probably for the mirror. He's siding the nobleman across out, siding a, a second kinetic soldier. Uh, maybe maining these kinetics, um, they work with your, maining these kinetics, they work with your gravity bind, they work with your level limit, uh, and this probably, he was anticipating a lot of warriors. Yeah, Moxie's won the 16 with warriors, you know, people like to duplicate what worked before. So maybe they were anticipating a heavier warrior turnout. Um, chain energy is fantastic in the mirror, I believe. Um, just getting a lot of cards, getting it set up early, um, getting your burn stuff happen. This card is just a terror to deal with. Uh, and then you got the, it's got some, got some dope traps on the side. Mirror, torrential, those can come in in the, in the mirror, they can come in against warriors. They can come in, you know, anytime you feel like your opponents is is, uh, is getting a little too aggressive on you. So again, all in all, I think it's a solid burn list. This list can rotate as well as much as the turbo list can rotate, as much as the control list can rotate. This list can rotate as well, and uh, I'm I'm glad to see it. As much as I am not a burn advocate, I know there are people who are very dedicated to this burn based strategy and they enjoy playing it. And I'm glad that it's here because if not for burn. There would just be, you know, this this void of of just, you know, the same the same decks kind of doing it, but Burn kind of keeps everyone honest and allows allows the game to do it like that. So, uh, shout out to you, Birdman. What do you guys think about this deck, Burn deck, uh, Chain Energy coming back in a major way in the side deck? I think it's pretty dope as well. So, shout out to you, Birdman. Tell me what you think. All right, we're gonna jump on down to sixth place. I guess it was tied for fifth, but we're gonna call it six because that's where it's at. You got yada yada again with another with back to back tops in this event. Um, I love to see it again. I love to see it again. I want to see I want to see this player yada eighty eight go ahead and take one of these down. He comes in, he gets tops, 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 and he's got a very unique strategy to do it with the Mataza, the Zapper, double tap, equip card, beat down, blast off deck with all that. So. He's got the main deck of Shura Priest. I think I can pull up the deck from last time. Let's see if I can pull that up. From the last top, I will place, so this this deck, I will put it right, let's see if I can, I'll put it over, over my head. This, so this is the previous deck. 
and this is the deck he took this time. So I'm gonna do a little, see if I can do a little side by side. So boom. So this this is gonna be the side by side of the previous top that uh, that Yada 88 made, and this is the new updated version for this new event that Yada 88 decided to go with. So it looks like uh, they just kind of streamlined and refined a little bit, kind of got rid of their Berserk Gorillas. You got rid of the, uh, you kind of cleaned up the, the side deck a little bit. You got rid of the Jar of Grease. I guess you felt like you were stable enough here. You got more Zing Zangs in the main. Um, you kind of put the kinetics, you lowered those guys, you main deck, you got the Assure still going on in there. So it's it's very similar, but you added another card. So you went 41 cards, you got the Call of the Hunter going, you dropped the Royal Decrees all together. So he's evolving, Yada Eight's changing, he's getting this thing kind of honed in and dialed in. Uh, and it's just a matter of time before he just go ahead and pushes through and gets a dub with this deck. And I'll be so happy when I uh, when that finally happens because I like seeing people doing their thing. I like seeing people being unique and different and trying to push push the game to the next level because that's that's how you got to do it. Because a lot of times people and that's another thing. That's another thing that a lot of detractors to this game. Sorry, I'm ranting, but that's another detract thing that uh, detractors say. And they're like, hey man, this game is fixed. It's solved. It's broken. It's done. It's this, 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 and this. But then you look and you see a consistent, the same people are at the top tables every time. Like, how is that? How can you explain that? Because it's, I think, I think there is, a, I'd, I'd be lying if I were saying that there weren't, there isn't like some type of a, there isn't like a, a luck aspect. There, This is a game. It's not, it's not completely, you're not going to win every time, but it's, it's, it, it definitely awards uh, being consistent and being dedicated to your thing and, and making it work and getting the time in because if you can keep doing it back to back to back to back to back over and over and over and over and over again, it's just, it just goes to say like, Hey, maybe, maybe there's something more to it. I could be wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely willing to be wrong on that. All right. But that's Yada 88. Uh, again, solid list. I think uh, they're a dope player and hopefully they can go ahead and push through and get this thing on, uh, get on, go ahead and get qualified for this world's event and we'll see. All right, so tell me what you think about this deck as well. Pretty dope, love to see it. All right, jumping on, we got Duck Duck. Bing bong, bing bong. One of my, another one of my favorite players. Everybody's my favorite player. Uh, we got Duck Duck Goose from the city, New York City in the house, Duck Duck. You know, he's in here. Uh, he's very, very fantastic player. Uh, went to Worlds last year, trying to get that invite this year, working hard. Came in fifth place in this event, um, and he's he's got has his own brand of turbo as turbo as well. He's going he's going with the spies. So if you go back to Crash's deck, no spies. He's got the Spear Reaper House, Triple Faith. Okay, uh, this pretty standard stuff all the way through here. But also he's doing the same thing too. He's got the one nobleman. He's got the one minecon, and he's made an MST. I think that's interesting. You don't see that too often. And also he decided that he's going to go no solemn judgment. Um, solemn judgment is a very uh, an extremely powerful card, obviously. Very prevalent in this metagame right now. It's all over the place. Everyone's playing Solemn Judgment. But one thing you do notice about Solemn Judgment, when you start flipping those things, you know, you get into ring range, you get into BLS range, you get into, you know, the game's end relatively quickly. So you gotta really be responsible how you use them and how you how you how you plan it out with them. So he just like to just go ahead and get rid of all of those and not take that thing and inside to go main deck triple trap dust shoot. So um, if you can use this card very well and you can, if you got good matchups for it, you don't play a lot of people who set their whole hands all the time, um, which happens less, ironically enough, I think Trap Dust Shoot is coming back because everyone is kind of playing the Night Assailant build now, so Trap Dust Shoot is even stronger than it used to be before, at least in my opinion. Um, so it's it's so it's so interesting to me like how these things kind of it's it's all it's all circular, it all happens. Duck Duck is also on the on the wing blast variety here. Fan of the wing blast. If you, if you see his world's list, I think I'll put his world's list up here from last time. I'm ashamed, I'm, I'm, I'm sad there's no uh, there's no heavy slump to be found in the side deck, but uh, he's, he's back on the wing blast. Got the main deck MST. No jar greeds either. So he's got no jars, no solemns, no just one main deck, one battle trap here. And he he rolled this thing off to a fifth place, uh, fifth place showing. So I mean, it's working for him. I think it's very interesting. Um, I play my turbo when I do play turbo, which is very rare. I don't play a lot of turbo, but I like the, uh, I think I like the jars in there. I like, I, I'm, I like the Night of Salem build a little bit more too. It's just, I mean, it's way more sacky and way more explosive, I think, but that's just me. Preference is your preference. You do what you feel and whatever, you, what cards you can play the best, but there's a lot of options here to choose from. So tell me what you think. 
on the side deck he's got the double mobius um he's got the all the whole litany of battle traps a little zing in there a little dust uh he got some uh immer some some walk he can throw it in a walk a little bit he's got the swords uh, and he's got the opposite of each one that he has here so uh, you can bring those in going second or whatever going first i mean he can bring those in game two against the turbo maybe the control stuff and kind of kind of even it out a little bit so Maybe he's on the same theory, the one knock, one mine. That could be that could be something to that. Sure inside for some goats. Dope. Like it. Very clean. It's working. Um, I don't know. Tell me what you think about this deck. I think it's pretty cool. Shout out to you, Duck Duck again, man. Keep going hard. Hopefully you can go ahead and lock one up as well. I, I think the world would be dope with uh with some duck duck goose in there. Shout out to the corn men as well. So next we got number four. We're going to the top four again. No surprise, no surprise. Back at the top table, we got Anthony Alvarado. Again, another fantastic longtime champion level player. He's been crushing this game for a long time. He's playing another burn deck. So this deck, I'm just looking at it. It looks absolutely miserable to play against. This looks like no fun to play. I do not, I would not want to play against this deck. Oh my goodness, just look at, oh. So he's got the triple chain energy main deck. He's got the giant grenades, okay. Uh, I. Uh, Again, I want to say I like it, but I don't. You, you know the vibes. You know the vibes. No, hey, I don't want. I don't want to plead to hate me. I wish she was here. She could tell you all about it. But panda, he got two. I think that's interesting. I think it's an interesting number. Two pandas, uh, one kinetic, uh, one in the side. This deck is kind of, in my opinion, again, I'm not a burn expert. I, I can't. I can't caveat that enough. But uh, I know there's different styles of burn that you want to play. You want to play burn that's more aggressive base like more attacking with leaning on the pandas maybe have some cat stuff throw it in there you know there's different there's different types so you want to make it more of aggressive like more base attacking base locking up your field you know jamas giant grenade attack or you can have more that's kind of like a, a stall he kind of sit back and just let it happen to you he kind of is blending the blending the waters on both you know you can set up behind the chain energy set up behind your stall cards uh, accumulate all your burn stuff and then just just finish you off so and then in the side deck he's got the triple mobius Maybe for the mirror, maybe for warriors, because warriors like to come in and they just like to um, just jump all over you. That's kind of the strategy when you're playing this deck and warriors. You want to just get on them quick, beat them down, and get it over with. But with these Mobius and these kinetics and these brain cons coming in, and you know it could just it could just get real messy real quick. So I think it's a cool looking deck. Um, I would hate to play against this. Shout out to all the opponents that had to face this mess in the in the event and hopefully i mean somebody somebody had to beat him i'm glad it wasn't me i didn't i did not play in this event um but it was it was cool and shout out to you, anthony man hopefully he can go ahead and lock one up he has not gotten an invite yet uh it, it's bound to happen it's just a matter of time i don't want to jinx anybody but uh he will be there so tell me what you think about this deck this is burn too so we had two burn decks so far uh two turbo decks and one aggro deck it looks like so a little bit of parody a little bit of parody we're mixing it up a little bit so now uh that was number four. So now we're going to go ahead and jump on to number three. Number three. All right. So number three, we got the homie. Oh, my goodness. We got fresh IRL, Mr. Kev, the golem god back in the third hole. OK, so this is another another golem topping situation. Um, and Kev has just been on a pretty hot streak as well. He hasn't secured a victory just yet, but he's topped some significant events this season in rapid succession, like back to back to back, uh, tops. Well, not back to back to back. He's had, he's had a, a, ser a series of tops, uh, Texas Jeep, Texas Grand Prix, this event, uh, GFC 17. He's been topping like crazy. He's a real topping machine. Just come on the scene and just going ham. Um, and he's doing it his own in his own way with this golem golem century right here So I have fully converted to the golem to the to the to the house of golem I am convinced that that card is really good uh, a lot of people may not agree with me some people may agree with me I think the card is fantastic and he deploys it very very effectively um, In this deck, so this is a control deck very interesting ratios again with just the two metamorphosis and the one scapegoat You got the you got the two phase you got the center servant one sork I think that's cool. Or the three, the three Dequaches here. I think, I think, I think, I think this deck is cool as well. I know I'm saying that a lot, but 
well, I have I have tried this deck. I've played it. One thing I did notice in my in my time when I was using it is that if this Dekoichi gets knocked, you're gonna have a hard time getting these Chaos Monsters in play, at least in my experience. Um, I know you can kind of go into Thousand Eyes and then that could be your dark as well, but I would uh, I would probably try to set the Golem, get that guy knocked before this, and maybe you can, you can do it. You just have to play the game and, and do it the right way, but super cool deck. I like it. You know, I like seeing Control do well. Even, you know, yeah, he's got, so on the side, he went back to the, he went back to the Solemn Wishes tech. I remember a lot of players was using this a few weeks back or a few months ago, uh, Solemn Wishes versus the Burns to get those things set up. You draw, they can't kill you because you got Solemn Wishes going. And then he's got triple mind control. So he's like, Turbo, you're going to have a long day dealing with my triple mind control in the side coming in. Wow. Yeah, he's got he's got triple mind, he's got double walk, and he's got triple, uh, triple Solemn Wishes with the two wide spreads. So I think I think it's interesting. I think this deck is very interesting. I think and I think more more than just the deck and the cards, I think I think Kev is really a really good player. Fresh IRL, I think he's a really good player. He knows a lot about the game. Um, and all the all these players are too obviously. So it's not it's not just a deck. You gotta you gotta be able to play it right. Think about that. What do you think about this deck? What do you think about Golden Century? I think that card's dope. Shout out to you, uh, Kev. I think he's gonna be in Philly as well. So I'll see you over there and uh, we can we can have some golem battles. We'll see how it goes. All right. Uh, going on to number two, number two, do, 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 do. all right, we got Lucas, Mr. Lucas, again, back at the top, again, second place this time, I uh, didn't, didn't quite seal the deal with Ivan, uh, came in second place, uh, Rampage, yeah, Rampage, now LRG, LRG, now Rampage, he's, he's somewhere in the, in the, in the, in that area somewhere, but he's back on Warriors in a major way, coming out. He's got the textbook helmet package that you would expect. Monster lineup wise, I think it's interesting with the Zumbira. I know that guy comes and goes. Tribe in the main kind of comes and goes. Um, triple Kaiku, Triple Blade Knight, one book, uh, Triple Dust Shoot. Okay, that's cool. And he's got some battle traps over here. So kind of getting away from the Dust Tornado, bringing in the Zing. Very cool. I think uh, solid, solid warrior situation here. Very standard as you know it to be. Uh, nothing too crazy. And that's a lot of things you'll notice about a lot of these top players, a lot of these guys who keep winning consistently and doing well. It's not a lot of, I mean, sometimes you have a little, a little tech tech here, a little, a little this, this, that there. Nah, you got to just keep it basic, keep it moving, play the, play the, play a solid deck and uh, play it well. And you're going to have success from what I understand. I don't do that. I like to get wild and crazy, which is why I don't have a lot of success myself personally, but maybe I'll take my own advice and just kind of keep it easy, but that's just no fun. That's no fun for me. I don't know, but tell me what you think. Just, just give it a shot and uh, and we'll see how it goes. But Lucas with the second place finish, I think that's really cool. But look at the side deck. So he's got side deck. He's got the triple spy instead of two. A lot of times people go two. He went three, uh, triple spy, triple Mobius, probably for the mirror or maybe the turbo matchup. Turbo really doesn't like Mobius too much. They don't really have a lot of, uh, a lot of answers for, especially if you're playing Solemn Judgment. You flip over the Mobius, now they have to play it, and that's half your life. And then you got another spy usually, or you got Blade Knights and all this other stuff that's happening in the periphery. And you got Mobius just blowing all your stuff up, man. I don't know, it can get, it can get kind of out of hand pretty quick. Uh, or maybe I've seen a lot of Warrior players, they'll just, uh, they'll just he might just side all this stuff in. Uh, maybe not these guys. Just side in the 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 Royal Decrees, the Mobius, the the uh, the Gravekeeper Spies, all this stuff, and just have like a a weird aggro beatdown, no trap situation going on, and you got to deal with that too. So they can go a lot of different ways with it, man. And this is a this is a, this is just no different. Here we go, back at the top, Lucas crushing it again. Shout out to you. I'm sure he's already he's already got several qualifications this season already. I don't know exactly how many, but I, I, I can definitely see him getting a couple more before this thing is over with. So make sure you, if you're playing these events, go ahead and get in there early. So if you want to become invited, you could do that. Uh, and you have to beat people like Lucas all the time or Lucas. I think it's pretty dope. Very dope. Very dope. All these decks are dope. They're, they're no trash. They're, you want, there's no trash like making it up here except for this next deck. No, I'm kidding. All right, so that was Lucas' second place deck. And now we're gonna go to the number one. 
Number one, Mr. Ivan Rosito. Okay, back in the winner's circle again. Again, Ivan has refused to come to the program. I've asked him several times in several messages and he just will not do it. So I will go ahead and provide you with the information as I know it to be. I could very well be wrong, but this is Ivan's first place deck. Ivan has now been fully converted to the Knight Assailant package. He was definitely in the bat in the wagon of Knight Assailant is trash for a long time and but now he has fully fully adopted Knight Assailant as the as the truth of Turbo. He is a Turbo only player. He will only play Turbo. You will never see him in an event with nothing but Turbo. Uh, and he's just trying very hard to make the most streamlined Turbo deck available for that specific time or meta or at, as people develop new things, he's going to continue to play Turbo um, to, to counter that. So he's got the Knight Assailant card destruction situation, three to Koichi, two spy. I, I just listen, just reading some of the things he's posted and said, I know he believes like three spies might be too much when you're running three jars. Uh, so he is back on three jars. Um, I know there was some talk about that going to one jar, maybe one does shoot one solemn type situation, but he's, he's since gone away from that, bringing the MST back into the main deck. I think just to kind of really hedge that game one versus warriors and MST is just a generally a good card too to kind of, uh, if, 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 uh, employed correctly. Yeah. So got the tribe in there. No souk, no souk in the main, no souk in the main. I think that's uh, I think that's interesting. That's one, one takeaway. He's back on the wing blast too. That's another, that's another thing that kind of jumps out. He's back on the wing blast. He was firmly in the Regeki brace, Regeki break camp for a little bit of time and decided, Hey man, wing blast is better. And I, I was, I was in the booth, um, commentating this event and I saw him deploy this, uh, wing blast with great effect in a few of the matches. I think it was really cool. Kind of really generated some serious advantage with wing blast and night assailant magician of faith late game. That's brutal. You know, you wing blast their thing, put it to the top of their deck, discard night assailant, get back faith, set faith. And now they're redrawing the same cards while you're getting back one of these cool green cards, man. It's just, it just it just spirals advantage very quickly and he he did that a few times no torrential in the main as well so he's back off the torrential he's kind of going you know kind of reverting to some of the old theory and employing and, and mixing it with the new stuff and i love to see it so it's kind of really uh really pushing pushing turbo to the limits i suppose he's got the mobius sukiyomi ashura two walks book mind just one mind i like that too uh swords and then three Sakuretsu, two Dust Shoot, um, TT, and the and the Zinger. So I think I think it's obviously it's going to be really solid. And this player is is extremely solid too. He never makes mistakes. Very um, very meticulous in what he's doing on the uh, on the on the play. Not a lot of not a lot of misplays. Not a lot of loss of motion. Not a lot of loss of movements. It's very. He's very deliberate, so he's a dope player. I think he's the number one player right now. I have to look. I'm not sure. I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure that he's back in the in the number one seat of the GOAT format players. Um, and he's probably going to be there for a while. He's already several by several several invites this season. It's just another one. And he's going to continue to do that. So I'd be on the lookout for this player um, if, you know, if, if you find yourself in these in these uh, in these competitive scenes, very very fantastic player. He's beat me several times. I'm trying to, I'm gonna take him out though one of these days. You know it's gonna happen. You know so shout out to you, Ivan. Congratulations on your uh, on your win, and I look forward to see what you got going on next in the season. You know so this season is actually not coming to an end right now. We're Ju we're July, August, September, October. October is the official end of the season. So make sure that you are participating. One, now you know me, your boy JDZ has told you when and what is happening in the round GOAT world with these dates and these events. So July is going to be jam packed with GOAT format action. If you want to participate, make sure you're doing that. Make sure you're getting out into the getting out into the game if you uh, if you feel so inclined. So yeah, just make sure however you want to do it, wherever you are in the world, make sure you're taking the time to get out and play some play some GOAT format Yu-Gi-Oh and tell your friends about it. Get them all in here, you know, feel free. Shout out to everyone who has reached out to me. I'll be on Dueling Book like, hey man, I seen the video. That's what got me to start playing, you know, and I found this and I did that. All, you know, I, I, I really love it, I can't get enough. So if you've seen me playing or if you played me or you wanna, if you see me out there, man, just make sure you're participating. It's loads of fun, it's something to do. Also, uh, yeah, stay and stay tuned to this this channel. Like I said, I'm I'm putting I'm putting JDZ plays goat stuff on the on this channel, the goatformat.com 
YouTube channel. There's a lot of things happening on this channel as well. You got uh, Scully's Laboratories happening on this channel. You got War Lake stuff happening on this channel. TK might come out and do something on this channel. You got everything that's happened. This is like the this is like the thing. So if you are into GOAT format, like as much as me and other people are, just make sure you just stay tuned and uh, and don't miss out what's going on. Again, War League is happening. All sorts of GOAT format events are happening. So keep it locked, dialed in keep your notification on make sure you like and comment and share and subscribe i don't know if that helps it sh should help we're trying to grow this thing i think this channel is almost at five thousand, so you can do that you know, help help push the push the message out there do your part to help grow the game and hopefully i see you all around the goat world but until then tell me what think about these decks again i'm going to place them all in the in the, in the links of the description of this thing and uh we'll do it like that until then i'm jdz i play goats till the next time peace This program was made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you.